Hi everybody, Zeev Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master, the surgical training for dentists. Welcome to this video. And this one is not an easy one. I'm going to talk about why do soft tissue grafts fail and talk a little bit about my approach. And I hope you'll find it very, very interesting. So you just performed a soft tissue graft, in this case a free gingival graft, and the patient comes back a few days later, and that's what you're seeing, or that's what I saw. And the graft is obviously necrotic, it looks all white. Uh, there's no signs of vitality, maybe except for the apical part of it. It's a little bit discouraging, and the question is why? What happened? What went wrong? And what am I going to do next? So it's very easy to get overwhelmed and maybe feel bad about yourself, maybe feel that this is going to be a big problem, maybe have some fear and concern. So this is all totally normal if you're going through this phase and um, in reality, we say, you know, get over it. And now is the time to manage this situation and turn it around. And there are proven protocols, there are proven methods, some of which I lectured on for years and years, and I teach dentists the protocol of delivering bad news and the clinical management and how to make this situation better. Your patient trusted you to perform this procedure. It did not work. So now it's your responsibility to get the patient out of this problem and solve it. That's, that's really what's expected of you. And it's a big responsibility that we shouldn't take lightly. And I promise to teach you everything that I know to help you in these types of situations. Now, the purpose of this video is to talk only about one issue, why do soft tissue grafts fail? And I'm going to describe it to you so you can understand the essence of it. You just must. Because when things go wrong, you need to know why so it doesn't happen again because all these failures and complications have a huge impact on your practice, on your financial situation, and also on your mood, which is also important. So why do soft tissue grafts fail? So before we answer this question, it's actually important to know why do soft tissue grafts work? What are the conditions that make them successful? And if you know that, you will understand failure as well, because you're basically not satisfying all the requirements. So soft tissue grafts work if they have good blood supply. For root coverage, if the root is receptive, meaning free of any contamination restoration, so there's an actual exposed cementum or dentin layer that is ready to receive a graft. When your grafts and flaps are immobilized, stable, not moving, and also, long term, when you control the etiology for the recession, and that's when we see our late failures, if the etiology is not under control, whatever that may be, we see some relapse. So grafts work for these reasons. And they will fail if even one of these conditions is not met. So talking about blood supply, and this is an example of a free gingival graft, the blood supply for this type of graft is fantastic. It comes mostly from the split thickness flap from the vascular bed, uh, mostly in the mucosa area, and to some extent also from the uh, deep epithelialized attached gingiva. And that's why these grafts are very successful. The blood supply is very, very good, and they rarely fail because of uh, lack of vascularity. So when you're performing a soft tissue graft, always think about where the vascularity is coming from. Where is this graft going to be nourished and stay alive? 
And this is an example of a connective tissue graft where you suture it to the interproximal tissue. So that's one source of vascularity. There's also vascularity coming from the split thickness flap from underneath, the periosteal layer, but also from the overlying flap. So blood supply is excellent, and connective tissue grafting rarely fails because of lack of vascularity. It does happen, but it's not very, very common. The exposed root surface can't be restored. This is an example of a non-receptive root with a class 5 uh, composite restoration. So you need to remove it. Uh, don't forget that the root surface is avascular. There's no blood supply coming from the root, but you can get the attachment to the root if you make the root receptive. So keep this in mind. Another reason for failure is if your grafts are mobile. If they're not sutured properly, in this case, a connective tissue graft is sutured to the interproximal tissue with a few resorbable sutures. And the overlying flap is advanced and released and sutured with the least tension. So the complex of graft and flap are both stable. And that's another key to success and a key to prevention of failure. So when you performed the graft and basically it became necrotic and failed, uh, it's obviously a problem of vascularity, in this case here, this is a free gingival graft, you need to understand the reason for the failure. And the obvious is that there was a problem with blood supply. And although I de-epithelialized the attached tissue, my split thickness flap extension was not apical enough. And I placed my graft mostly on root surface that is avascular, not a whole lot of vascularity coming from the attached tissue. And there was really almost nothing from the mucosal part of the gingiva. And that is the reason for this failure that seems to be devastating. Okay, so don't get discouraged. Every surgeon at any level has failures and complications. And we all have to face it. It's basically part of practice. So if you look at this slide... This is not before and after. This slide, the left picture, is after grafting, after successful grafting of uh, three teeth with recession. And the picture on the right is a follow-up after six years. Shows you the power of follow-up, so always follow up your patients. Make sure that your procedures are successful also in the long term. And when I performed this proce procedure initially, I was very happy with the results. I even published this case. But when I looked at the patient six years later, the tissue has relapsed. And in this case, this patient fell out of recall and did not wear a night guard and had some orthodontic relapse. And as a result, the tissue receded again because we did not control the etiology that was responsible for the recession. So... Soft tissue grafts can fail, and sometimes they can fail dramatically around teeth, around implants. So it's important to stay composed and calm and not get discouraged. And in this video, I talked about the four reasons why soft tissue grafts can fail. And this is part of surgical practice. It's part of life. And failure is the opposite end of success. Without failure, there's no definition of success. It happens to everybody. So for the next time, when one of your soft tissue grafts fail, when you have a complication or challenge, I hope you stay positive. I hope you keep my message in mind. Find out what went wrong. Why did your graft fail? Make the necessary adjustments for the next procedures and have surgical success. So if you like this presentation, if it made you feel a little bit better about your failures, feel free to share it with other dentists. I mean, this message is really important for all of us. And go to surgicalmaster.com, sign up for my weekly videos and blogs and other cool things. 
And I look forward to seeing and working with you in the future.